Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to talk about PS5 and Xbox Series X. Yes, we know the specification for both of these devices now, of course the Xbox uh, specifications was released to us well over a week ago and now as of yesterday we do now know a lot of the official specifications of the PlayStation 5. Now, because of that, they're everywhere. Let's face it, if you've been recommended this video by some sort of Google algorithm or you've been searching around, chances are you already know some, if not all, of the specifications of these two next-generation consoles. And I'm not going to bore, bore you and talk about all the specifications. This video is about one area, and that area is storage. I don't pretend to know a lot about the CPUs, that Zen 2 processor they're using, and the DDR6, a 16-gig memory, and all that sort of stuff. This video is about focusing on the storage. The reason being, they talk about storage all the time. And both of these two vendors have gone their own way as far as the storage media on these consoles go. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen a console that supports SSD. Both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, or Xbox X, whatever we're going to call it, both of them do arrive with support of NVMe-level SSDs. That's a PCIe-backed SSD. That gives you enormous speeds compared with the past. To put that into some sort of perspective, when you think back to the older generation of media, if you go really, really far back to consoles when they were dealing with like cartridges that were 8 to 10 megabytes max, and then from there we saw bigger cartridges like the 64 from Nintendo, and then from there we went into CD-based media with the likes of the PlayStation, which then gave into DVD media, so we went from about 700 meg media all the way to DVD at 4.7 gig and dual layer, it's even more. Um, then after that, we went into the first generation of hard drive consoles, such as your PlayStation 3 and your Xbox 360. These were consoles that arrived with SATA-based hard drives inside. Now, SATA is kind of the standard connection of the majority of hard drives, even now in uh, 2020. These give you, on average, about uh, between 150 to 220, maybe 220. 50 megabytes per second transmission on standard mechanical hard drives, those two and a half inch ones that they were utilizing. And if you included an SSD, two and a half inch SATA, you were looking at around 350 to 550 megabytes, which is pretty good. But although a lot of um, SSD stores were like, yeah, 500 megs, easy. It isn't as straightforward as that in traditional use because of something called raw access and compressed access. Raw access is when data is at the block level being dealt with and read and written to the media inside, whereas compressed is when algorithms that are built into the console itself, Xbox or PlayStation, that data is compressed and handled and then decompressed on the fly. It happens a lot in open world games and definitely in environments where there's textures that get reused and effectively where a character is moving around and content is generated live, not just loading, but all of the time. Which brings us neatly into the very latest generation. After PS4 and Xbox One, which again still utilized SATA-based hard drives and SSD, it became the bottleneck. And in this newer generation, they are utilizing not just SSD, but this PCIe-based SSD. M2, or M2 key as it's known, is this kind of micro form of SSD that is very, very small, but yet at the same time, fantastically fast. Now, both of these vendors are arriving with NVMe SSDs inside, but as mentioned, they've gone a very different way. The Xbox Series X arrives with one terabyte of NVMe SSD inside. Now, they are saying that raw access, it will give you 2.4 gigabit gigabytes per second access, not bits, bytes. So that equates to 2,400 megabytes per second. Remember the CDs back there at 700 uh, megabytes of storage? This would access those CDs ridiculously fast. And given that traditional hard drives and SSDs and the previous two generations of console have given us up to at the very most 500, this is an enormous jump uh, in terms of the NVMe that's being featured inside that Xbox Series X. But for compressed data, so when data is compressed by the system and then cached and then sent through um, the storage media, compressed is going to be a lot faster. And on the Xbox Series X, they're saying 4.8 gigabytes per second 
uh, transmission. So that's 4,800 megabytes per second speed on that Xbox Series X, which is phenomenal. But it gets even better in terms of media access and media type on the PlayStation, because the PlayStation 5 is using its own custom internal SSD, arriving at 825 gig, which is weird. So approximately based on, again, this isn't an exact science with terabytes versus gigabytes, you're losing at about 175 gig, give or take, or although it's technically 1,040, etc. Um, but you are gaining an improved flash controller, controller and better speeds overall. How, how much better overall? Well, let's discuss. Um, at the press conference from Sony, where they talked about a lot of the specifications of the media inside this device, it's worth saying that the SSD, they state, will start at 5.5 gigabytes per second access raw. So not compressed, raw. So its raw speed is equivalent, equivalent to 5,500 megabytes per second access. That's crazy. Now, don't get me wrong, that is almost certainly read, not write, because you're, the assets will be um, put onto the SSD and being retrieved from the game in real time. So, at 5,500 megabytes per second access in read, you're going to be able to load games and load environments so fast. If they can do that, it's incredibly impressive. Now, remember, that was raw access. What about compressed? What about those um, game world assets? They are saying that it can load between 8 to 9 gigabytes per second. So that's 8,000 to 9,000 megabytes per second access. Right now, I don't know a commercial SSD that can do that. Okay, so it is so, so much faster. The combination of the hardware inside taking advantage of core efficiency and using NVMe SSD media. So on the face of it, and again, we're not trying to say one is better than the other. That's not the point of today's video. I'm talking about the media and how to upgrade and what you should be looking out for because NVMe, NVMe media isn't the only thing to consider here. They are saying that uh, the PlayStation at least is going to be taking advantage of um, PCIe t uh, Gen 4 or times 4. So what that means is it's a newer generation of PCIe which opens up the bandwidth. That is how they're going to get those speeds. Once we look at the earlier generations of NVMe SSD storage, you know, uh, companies like Seagate and Samsung and, the, uh, and companies that have released NVMe's to market very early on, they went through different iterations of NVMe versioning. I think they're up to 1.3 currently, um, as well as um, uh, associations and utilizations of PCIe connectivity. The result was that the first generation of NVMe's arrived at uh, speeds of around 18 to 200 megabytes, um, sorry, 1800 to 2000 megabytes per second speed. Introducing PCIe 4, with these NVMEs is going to open things up dramatically. Now, there is kind of mixed readings from what I'm seeing about if the uh, Xbox Series X has PCIe 4. I'm pretty sure it does, but that wouldn't explain how their speeds are purported to be lower. Now, whether that's um, Sony aiming for the moon, who knows, and Xbox Planet Conservative, or a reality of fact, we don't know. But let's move on to the second part of this video about upgradability and what are the SSD NVMe media drives you should be looking for. Well, there's technically two answers. Sony say that the NVMe's that they recommend that you purchase for upgrading in your custom area, so putting your own drives on, those ones, they're going to be releasing full and frank specifications later on in the year before release. But right now, we can definitely say that there is an NVMe SSD upgrade slot as well so there's the main drive inside and there's also going to be an additional nvme slot for adding further nvme drives which are becoming quite affordable in price even compared with traditional ssds although nowhere near as cheap as hard drives and on top of that there is a usb port on the side for connecting an external drive for your ps4 games the reason being that as well as the ps4 games would run on your internal storage that external bay is for those PS4 drives, uh, PS4 and PS3 games to run on this architecture because it can't 
you know, um, the you can't run traditional. I'm sorry, you can't run PS5 games on an external drive because you need that tremendous bandwidth. On the other side of the fence, Xbox, I've given you um, the uh, 1TB NVMe SSD inside, but on top of that, there is an expansion slot, and this allows you to uh, install a proprietary built SSD into those bays. Now, I know the minute you hear proprietary built SSD or proprietary built drive, a lot of you have gone, oh, I don't like that. And I don't blame you. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about um, having to buy certain drives. I can, I hopefully a third party will come out with an adapter that you can put your own NVMEs into. But the idea that you're going to have to get these external um, NVMe SSDs to introduce them into the device and not just buy an NVMe retail on its own, because they're only about that big. They're very, very small devices. Um, it's not great to me, but I can see why they would do that to make sure that only top-end SSDs are utilized. Because NVMe isn't just the only thing that keeps these things fast. you got to get the right NAND on the chip. So uh, 3D TLC NAND are highly recommended, kind of professional grade. You see them on uh, the Seagate Fire Cuda and Iron Wolf 510 series, as well as the Samsung 970s. Both Evo and Pro take advantage of that NAND. But it's worth highlighting that the Xbox does also arrive with a USB port as well, for the same reason to have those external um, drives connected for those older generation backwards compatible games. It's great to see them both doing that. But right now, I don't think you can even buy the media that both of these two providers are putting out there because the speeds they're proposing, um, although they are heavily assisted by that CPU and memory that's included in these high-end devices, that storage media, if it does utilize PCIe 4, NVMe PCIe 4, in terms of storage media, isn't just not cheap. It's not available, and it's going to be coming soon. So the hope is when these devices arrive to market, that that drive, the, those kind of drives from companies like Samsung, WD, Seagate, SanDisk, and more, have brought this technology to market in a far more commercial fashion. I know that um, Xbox, our, Xbox and Microsoft are working with Seagate on those external drives, and hopefully towards the end of the year, when both of these consoles are launched, we will have them here on the channel, and I will be doing a full upgrade video on both of these consoles with their own media to show you guys just how it's done. In fact, the very first video I ever did on this channel was upgrading my old PS4, and things have come a long way since then. So, have you got any questions? Maybe there's something I've missed about the storage media on these devices. Are you excited about it? I know I am, and I'm looking forward to seeing about just if these speeds that are being promised by the internal storage media by both Sony and Microsoft are as good as they say. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you think, and if you've heard different in the time since this video was made in March, maybe you're watching this at the end of the year and you want to upgrade your PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, and you've watched this and gone, well, they knew nothing back then, and you're right. Let me know how that Corona thing worked out for you guys. But... Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more and I'll see you next time.